Today we are going to talk about uh, leather and the terminology and transparency for the uh, consumers. So very hot and, and uh, intense topic we are going to touch today. Be ready for it. And I'm going to just share some housekeeping rules. So we are, uh, we are going to go through uh, some presentation and we start to do some questions. But uh, if you have any question, please uh, add in the uh, Q&A section. We will try to reply as soon as possible to avoid to, to keep too much at the end. And uh, yeah, and uh, so the moderator of this event uh, is uh, myself, Nicolò, and uh, my friend Nicolò, that we are- Good morning, everyone. Here as, we are here as a sustainable talks with NNN. Uh, we try to bring awareness in the fashion industry, in the sustainability of the fashion industry. And uh, also, we are going to start now with our guest uh, for the second time in a row, Maurizia Contu from uh, Unich. So, Hi, everyone. Hi, Maurizia. So she is, she is, uh, she developed the market analysis for Unich, and this is very helpful tool actually to support the uh, associate on uh, the, the companies and also for internal activities of Unich. And uh, she deals also with the national uh, government and also European government level for uh, specifically for the animal welfare, uh, traceability and the sustainability uh, topic. I want to introduce to everyone uh, Gustavo Quintano. Uh, Gustavo Quintano uh, works for COTANS, the National Trade Association of the 13 European countries. And, uh, and Gustavo has a very long experience in Europe, in the European Union, as lobbyist and now as a, a main um, actor for the, Euro for the um, leather industry. Th good morning, Gustavo. Good morning and good afternoon, everybody. And our uh, last guest is Alessandra Siena, again from Unich. And good afternoon. Hi, Alessandra. Ciao, Alessandra. So she basically she is the uh, she is the one that helps to spread the word. She's the key person that drive all the training of uh, Linea Pelle all the training for uh, companies, for professional, but also all the training for the uh, school, especially for the uh, fashion institute uh, around the world. So she is the one that can really uh, bring awareness from the young age to the more expert one. And uh, actually, uh, it's with Alessandra that, uh, that uh, we are, actually no, we are, uh, it's with uh, Gustavo that we are going to start, right, Nico? Yeah, yeah we want to start with a question that we prepare for, for Gustavo and, you know, from his experience, why for him, we, but from his perspective, the European perspective, why we need to protect leather and why we need to protect the word leather, real leather? Well, uh, I think... That's a good question, eh? but uh, I think that leather doesn't need to be protected as such. Uh, leather is, sells itself, leather is a fantastic material, and uh, I think that everybody that uh, um, gets in contact and, and experiences leather for the first time gets immediately enthusiastic about it. However, uh, the second part of your question, why we need to protect the term leather is very important, because um, uh, it has been, well, we have seen in the very, in, mostly in the recent years that, that the term leather has been abused, misused by, by other materials that are promoting uh, their uh, alternative materials by using the term leather. And that causes confusion in the market, causes confusion uh, to consumers. And uh, at the end, nobody knows what leather is and what leather is not. And therefore it is very, very important to protect the term leather. And give us a just a quick update. So in terms of European Union is protecting the word real leather, correct? Well, that's a long, <laughs> that's not a quick answer. That's a very long answer because uh, um, there is only, the, uh, the term leather is only protected at European level only for footwear because there is this footwear labeling directive for okay. all other uh, uh, materials, there is no um, comprehensive protection of the term leather. 
only a number of, of, of EU member states that have a leather authenticity legislation to protect leather. And therefore, yeah. it's still a question how to uh, ensure that the term leather is, uh, is protected uh, uh, comprehensively in Europe. Th thank you, Gustavo. I want to pass now to Alexandra and, you know, from her tra training perspective, tell us a little bit, what is leather, Alexandra? Yes, with pleasure. So good morning again and good afternoon, everyone. And thank you very much, Nico and Nico, for <laughs> introducing me. I would like to start talking about the first part of the title of this webinar, that is leather is a unique material. This will be a sort of short introduction to the main topic of today, that is uh, terminology and transparency for consumers. So what is leather or better? Why is it a unique material? First, leather is the most ancient material of the mankind. Leather dates back to the Paleolithic and it has been in use for thousands of years in thousands of roles and it remains iconic to this day. And uh, why? Because it comes from nature. It has got a natural origin. Um, prehistoric man immediately realized that he could recover the skins of the animals he hunted for food to protect himself uh, to, from the weather. So leather became a man's first garment very soon. And it is created by the tanning of animal lighting skins to make them more durable and to make them easier to work with. Therefore, uh, tanning is the first activity of the mankind. It comes before agriculture, before handicraft, and before all the other activities that have had an impact on the evolution of the mankind. So we can state that leather is in our DNA and that it's our second skin. Having said that, uh, now let's see why. Uh, and we say that leather comes from nature and this is because it has an animal origin. Hides and skins are an organ of the body of the animal. And as an organ, they have to, um, to perform many vital functions. The most known is to uh, provide a barrier against mechanical strain, against thermal injury, against hazardous substances, irradiations, infections, but many other functions are absorption, excretion, breathing, sensorial perceptions, and other functions. And in order to fulfill all these beneficial functions without undergoing any damage or changes, it has a quiet, complicated fibrous structure, which has been designed by nature and which is linked to its animal origin. And this structure is so peculiar that cannot be reproduced artificially. Now let's see what's this structure. Let's talk about the cross-section of leather. And this is a real picture showing all these fibers and these bundles of fibers interlacing with each other in three dimensions in a specific, in a specific way. And uh, what's the cross-sections? Now we are looking at the leather from its thickness. So we, I want to show you what's inside a piece of leather. Of course, we are talking about leather, so we are not talking about raw hides and skins. These fibers are made of collagen, which is the typical protein of eyes and skins. And of course, since you are looking at leather, as I was saying before, this collagen has been treated, has been treated with a specific process to be made into a durable material. Therefore, collagen is the most important biomaterial of our material. And this specific three-dimensional fibers structure, this specific three-dimensional organization and architecture of collagen fibers is present on raw hides and skins and should be recognizable also on finished leather and at any stage of the leather making process. And not only that, if we take a piece of leather from a leather bag, from a leather belt, from a leather shoe and from all the leather items, 
we should be able to recognize this structure if we see this piece of leather under the microscope. This is very, very important. Yeah, this is very important topic, Alexandra. So the structure is always the same also after tanning because, and also the other uh, type of material, uh, sorry, the other type of, of use of the, of the material because we just get a, a, a question from uh, uh, Marco Pfeiffer and he asked, what about the leather for souls? I guess it's the same, right? Yes, it's the same. So we still see collagen. We still see how collagen is, uh, is structured. So we still see this three-dimensional um, architecture of collagen fibers. Of course, collagen has been treated chemically, but its physical structure remains more or less intact and should be recognizable under the microscope regardless the end use of leather. Alessandra, just, a, just a, a point, you can correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong. Yes. But the difference between sole leather and, and, uh, uh, and uh, leather for uppers um, is uh, not only, the, of course, the fact that it is tanned with a different uh, tanning agent, but it's because it's also that the leather in the soles is actually pressed, compressed. It is a full thickness of the hide that is pressed to become then the sole. While generally on the, on the, on the uppers, you will have a, a leather that has been generally split or reduced in thickness. So in order to, to fit the, the use of, uh, of the leather in, this, in, the, in the shoe. Is this correct? Yes, this is correct. Uh, so, so leather uh, should, um, let's say, be, um, how can we say, during, during walking, uh, so leather undergo uh, abrasion, which is a very strong mechanical stress. So that's why this should be very, very compact. This should be treated in a specific way. This should be taken from a specific part of the hide, which is a, a bovine hide. Yes, yeah, so there are, of course, differences if we take a piece of leather under the microscope. But generally speaking, we should be able to recognize this fiber structure interlacing with each other in this specific network that is leather. And why is this structure so important? This is the point. Why is it so important? Uh, the enormous number of fibers and bundles of fibers which are uh, irregularly interlaced with each other, um, as we said before, uh, give the leather some typical extraordinary properties. Um, now let's try to uh, see which are all these properties and because these properties make it a unique material and make it different from all the other materials used for the same purposes. For example, flexibility. We have this network of fibers and fibers can slip one against the other because there's water be, between the fibers, if we talk about raw hides and skins, there are fat liquorine agents at the end of the process. So flexibility is, is quite important. Leather can be very, very soft. Of course, we can reduce flexibility as in case of sole leather throughout the process, but this is something else. Then leather is characterized by uh, an incredible mechanical resistance, particularly under stress, thanks to this network of fibers. Adaptability is another uh, huge advantage. Leather seems like uh, taking shapes. Breathability, most probably this is one of the most appreciated property of leather. We say leather breathes, why? Because the way skin and leather are structured um, gives the material the capacity to convey water vapor, to convey perspiration, and this is very important for hygienic and comfort tissues, particularly for uh, certain types of uh, end uses, uh, such as footwear, for example. And then thermal insulation. This is another advantage. It is another property appreciated by the consumers, by our clients. The spaces between the fibers give this insulating effect, which is, which is important.
Uh, Alessandra, I have uh, one uh, thing I, I, I want to add here or, or uh, uh, question uh, because also I see the leather maybe as, as a more uh, durable product uh, as from the, let's say, from the brand point, point of view, we see often as a durable product and also as the uh, uh, property of to be uh, uh, worked, let's say. The, the, uh, is it something that we can consider the additional property of the leather? Yes, as I was saying, these are intrinsic properties which are linked to the animal origin of leather. Then all the other pro properties uh, depend on the processes. Of course, durability is given by tanning. Tanning is the reaction, as I said before, of collagen with specific substances that are tanning agents that make it a durable material. And durability is highly appreciated, I know. It's, uh, it's one of, of the, the advantage, especially nowadays, of our, of our material. So uh, we can change all these properties throughout the process. We can add other properties. properties. It depends on the specific recipes and the specific treatments um, uh, heights and skins uh, are subjected to. Uh, if you think about the color, if you think about the, the handle, the touch, the aspect, and the technical performances. If you think about, leather can be waterproof. Leather can be very soft, can be more rigid. Leather can be light, can be heavier. So a number of, pros, of properties are given by, uh, by the process. Okay. And um, I have a quick question that Julio, one of our, uh, one of our followers is asking, you know, uh, we say that those characteristics are specific to leather and real leather, correct, Alessandra? And uh, the question that he's asking is, are the vegan alternative, can the vegan alternative have the same or similar properties? Question mark. As I said before, this structure has been designed by nature. And Due to this structure, leather, genuine leather, is characterized by these extraordinary properties altogether. But these structures can, cannot be reproduced artificially. So if we are not talking about leather, we are not talking about the same material. We are, we are talking about something that is not characterized by this structure. Thank this you so much, one, Alyssa. Sorry? Thank you so much. You're, you're very welcome. This is why uh, the presence of this structure is one of the key points that have been taken into consideration to regulate the use of the term leather and its derivatives. So this has been taken from one of the standards and one of the regulations. A piece of leather is a hide or skin with its original fibrous structure more or less intact. The only material of animal origin can have this structure. So this again can answer to this question. But there are other key points. Uh, let's have a look to the uh, leather making process. Well, Alessandra, sorry, yes. I just want to uh, um, jump and uh, have a question to Gustavo also because you said all the properties and uh, uh, the definition of, of leather is getting there. But Gustavo, I wanted to ask you, why uh, only not now and only now, or why do we need to protect now the word leather with a, with a law, with, with the, uh, yeah, with, with, let's say with the law? Yes, well, that's, um, I think we're going to come to later on also to, to speak about that, but it's very important to, to, to protect it with the law because only a legal, protection can guarantee uh, that uh, a leather remains uh, uh, valid. That's what, uh, what uh, uh, legislators do with textiles. That's what legislators do with other materials. It's, uh, it's just a, a, a regulatory failure that there is no comprehensive legal protection for, for a material like leather. So uh, it's the, you, cannot, you, you don't achieve the same type of protection if you have a patent or if you have a um, um, uh, uh, copyright. So it's, uh, it, these are, these only protect uh, um, um, on specific circumstances, but not comprehensively. That's why it is important that there is a law to protect all consumers 
that what they buy is really what they want to buy. And if they want to buy leather, that they, they have leather uh, when, they, when they purchase it. Great, great. Thank you, Gustavo. Sorry, sorry, Alessandra. No problem, it's a pleasure. And uh, I would like to very shortly give a look at the leather making process because other definition comes, derives, fr derived from this, this process. Um, Heights and skins undergo a long series of mechanical treatments and chemical operations. And all these treatments aim at transforming heights and skins into finished leather. And these are long series of operations, as I said before. So here, all these operations have been grouped into four main microphases, which are the four departments you can see if you visit a full cycle tannery. Preparation to tanning, tanning, post-tanning operations, and finishing. In the first department, heights and skins, as the name says, um, are prepared to receive the tanning agents. Then they undergo the actual tanning where they react with specific substances that transform ice and skins into leather, which is a durable material, which has been stabilized. Then in the post-tanning department, the product of tanning is upgraded in terms of color, in terms of handle, in terms of some of its specific uh, physical mechanical properties. And finally, in the finishing department, the useful surface, which can be the grain side or the flesh side or both of them, are treated in dry conditions uh, to, um, to give to the surface the final look, the final aspect, the final touch, the final protection, for example. So uh, after briefly analyzing the process, we can add a little piece of information to the definition. So leather, is hard skin with its original fiber structure, tanned to be rock proof, of course. So we can talk about leather when hides and skins have been tanned. Not only that, now I would like to focus on the last step, which is finishing. Finishing can consist of mechanical treatments only. For example, when we want to produce the so-called velvety leathers, suede, new box, for example. Or most of the time, finishing consists on the combination of mechanical treatments and the deposition of a film, which is called finishing film, which um, can be formed after the applications of a mixture of chemical substances or using preformed uh, foils, as in the case of laminated leather, as you can see here. Uh, finishing can be carried out for different reasons. Uh, to protect the surface, as I said before, from the external agents, to give uh, the desired fashionable shade in high glossy, semi matte, in a transparent, in a, um, covering effect finishings can be done to give a high glossy aspect, as in this case, can be done to get an, an even or an uneven color, so an aged look, a padded aspect, can be done to reproduce the artificially the grain texture of other animals, can be done for a number of reasons. What it is usually done, what in the tannery is usually done, is to cover, is to apply, as you can see here, on the surface of the material, this film. So you can see here the fiber structure, so the thickness of the material, and the surface is coated by this film, which you can also see looking at the cross section on the on your right hand side. And since we are applying chemical substances that are not leather, another another uh, definition can be added. The last one I would say. If the leather is a surface coating, however applied, such surface layer must not be thicker than 0.15 millimeters. So the thickness shouldn't exceed a limit that some laws and standards set as 0.15 millimeters. And this is the second key point to take into consideration for the correct use of uh, terminology for leather products. Um, and this is it. <laughs> yes, and I, and I would say that this is, 
<laughs> this is thank you thank you very much alessandra because I, I think that this is a very important point uh, the um leather is leather only when it is substantially leather and that's that's the the important thing there is a an, if you if you have a, a leather that has a surface coating that is beyond 0 0.15 millimeters then it has another you have to use another term because otherwise you are you are actually cheating on on the product and that's that's what uh, we're going to hear i think from from Maurizio now thank you yes that's uh, that's a great point and thanks uh, that thanks a lot alessandra that was very good good insight on leather leather characteristic and leather finishing and uh, and yes now we're going through the regulation i think this uh, last point uh, it, it tells a lot 0 0.15 uh, millimeter as the limit everybody make this question uh, usually but uh, yeah, Nico, what, uh, what do we do? We go, ah, we see uh, before, before Maurizia start, we see there's other question also about uh, Sol. Thanks guys for the, yeah. for the questions. We don't want to focus all the webinar on Sol's. So maybe we reply later on, but the focus is on the terminology. We will of course reply later, but we try to go ahead and try to uh, explain all the point also of, of uh, Maurizia. There is a lot. There is a lot of question in in the Q and A section regarding sustainability, chemical, and uh, I think we can answer them at the end. They're very, very nice, very interesting questions around. Okay, so I guess it's my turn. Yes, Maurizia, go on. <laughs> can I share? So my my part of the presentation. Well, uh, now it's, it's, the, uh, it's the time to explain the, the part of the terminology and transparency. I start get, getting back to the first question. What is leather? Uh, even if my co-panelists will explain that. So leather is a specific uh, material with, with uh, unique properties that we have already seen. And that is the reason why, as Gustavo said, we need to choose the correct word and respect specific rules to uh, to define it and use it in the correct way while dealing with the market dealing with consumers and dealing with trade relations so uh, there are three uh, let's say three areas of uh, regulation regarding regarding uh, the terminology of leather the first one regards the technical standards uh, internationally recognized the second one regards the laws in the different countries and the last one regards the consumer protection let's see uh, about the standards the technical definitions that are um, that are recognized uh, at international level with this iso standard 15115 and the european standard 15987 um, as you can see, the definition is the one reported by Alessandra. So, leather is a hide or skin of an animal that has kept intact its original fibrous structure. Um, this, uh, this fibrous structure should be intact even if uh, the hide or skin is split into different layers, which is something that in the tanning process can uh, regularly happen and uh, that has not a surface coating that exceeds uh, uh, this level, this limit of 0 0.15 millimeters. So uh, again, the two properties, the fibers and the animal origin uh, that define what, uh, uh, what the material is. And this is uh, part of the definition that are shared at, uh, let's say, industry level, because these are technical standards. So that uh, market operators normally in their activity um, use and apply to, to the material. Excuse me, have... Maurizio. Yeah. I have a quick question from Damien. Damien yes. is asking, what about if it's above 0 0.15 millimeter? Is it That's still good. leather or not? And this is a very good question. Um, I will anticipate a little bit this answer. Um, if, it, if we have a coverage that exceeds 0 0.15, but it doesn't exceed uh, one third of the total thickness of the material, of the, of the leather, um, we can talk about uh, um, 
uh, covered leather. So it's not just leather, but it has, it, it, it is a, a leather with a covering. So you, you have to qualify better this kind of material. If the thickness of the coverage exceeds one third of the total, of the total thickness, you cannot talk about leather anymore. So this is, uh, these are the different uh, classification step to, uh, steps to uh, define uh, the material. Nicolo, Nicolo, I have here another, another point to, to make. I think there is also Julio Chocha who is asking um, something about recycled leather. About or, the fly leather, uh, the, the I, one of I the big brands used in the market. It would be good to, 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 to answer this question right now uh, because we have, we have seen uh, that uh, the definition of leather, which is the definition that the sector, that the operator of the industry have given themselves, it's, uh, it's uh, the international definition of leather, um, they have very precisely said that if the hydro skin is deconstructed, decomposed into fibrous structure, you cannot call this material, and, and then recomposed with a binder, you cannot call this material leather. And that is uh, the response that I would like to give to, to Julio. Um, and Gustavo. Because it's very important. But there is another point. There is another point. He, uh, uh, Julio was saying, is recycled leather as fly leather? In this question, um, thank you for this question because it allows me to say that you cannot talk about recycled leather. Uh, recycled leather is when you when you take the leather and you would make an, a new leather with this with this leather, and that's not the case with with what is uh, called fly leather. And why this is why we have asked uh, uh, the the company that is pro producing and promoting uh, this material to to change this uh, uh, this uh, definition and this, this term, because um, you can only speak about recycled leather fibers, and that is something that has been standardized like that, and uh, uh, you should avoid to use uh, um, an oxymoron, because fly leather would then actually give the impression that this recomposition of leather fibers with a binder, with, a, with, a, with other uh, substances, uh, uh, becomes actually leather, and that is something that uh, that would be very, very misleading for the consumers. I want to ask you a question, Gustavo. When you say binder in this process, you mean mostly glue, correct? Glue, yes, uh, but uh, there is no doubt. Glue generally is the, the way for for keeping the the fibers together. But it's not only glue, but there is also a lot of polyurethane that is being yeah, is being added. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, if I can, I, I would add um, a definition. I, I would help in giving the correct name to this material from a scientific point of view. I'm not talking from a commercial point of view because any, any name can be given uh, but leather, of course. But the scientific name is fiber leather board. It means that it's a sort of a panel which contains collagen fibers that they are not structured in three dimensionally, but are, um, are, are, are present inside something that it's not leather. So fiber leather board can be the correct scientific wording for this material. Leather fiber board, not fi leather fiber board, <laughs> the other way around. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that that's really uh, is in the in the uh, you know it's really a timing a timing question because uh, um, all these definitions are are uh, set in this uh, in the European legislation that uh, was mentioned at the beginning of the of the presentation the footwear the the footwear labeling directive in you in fact. Uh, Setting the requirement for um, how can how can explain well to describe the, the three different uh, parts of, the, of, a, of a pair of shoes um, has set all these definitions. So the definition of leather is the one we have already seen uh, aligned with the technical sectoral standards, but there is also a reference to the uh, leather fiber boards. Uh, so how can you, how can uh, I show you? However, if the tan hydro skin is disintegrated mechanically and or chemically into fiber particles, this is the material to which we refer here in this uh, in this part of the directive. 
this cannot be named leather anyway. So it's another, it's completely different material, which is constituted by leather fibers, but it has not the, the same properties because as we have seen at the beginning, the properties are related to the fiber stru structure. Again, we have uh, the reference to, to the coating of, uh, of leather. And then also we have uh, another, another term that has been introduced here. It is the full grain leather that can be used if uh, a leather has uh, maintained intact uh, the grain, the external grain, without uh, any mechanical operation to eliminate that can be uh, that can be performed in the in the tanning acti activity uh, to produce uh, certain articles. So this is really, uh, I think, the the, the correct reference uh, to uh, to discriminate uh, the different typologies of material uh, when we when we talk about uh, about leather or uh, derived materials. We have also another harmonized regulation in Europe, which is the one uh, related to the definition of, uh, of the textile names and to the labeling of uh, textile products that is not uh, taking into consideration the definition of leather, but uh, for every, um, every clothing article or textile article that contains some accessories, components, or details in leather uh, specifies that we have to mention this particular uh, sentence. Uh, it contains some textile parts of animal origin in order to, uh, to express to the consumer, to communicate into a label that uh, the, the, the accessory, the clothing that they are buying contains also uh, for example, a detail made with, with leather. This is a, a specification of or for the textile and clothing industry. But, yes, uh, Maurizio. Yeah. Okay. Go, go, Gustavo, if you want to, to no, add yes, something. No, yes, I, I just wanted to, to say that this, is, uh, this article, when it was uh, introduced into, into the, the regulation, the EU regulation on textile names and labeling, it was very controversial because it was a, an amendment that the European Parliament has introduced and, and uh, uh, the Council then only took part of this amendment. Actually, um, the, uh, the, the, the proposal for, for this article was that the, it should be specified what type of material it was and the, and the place where this material is being, is, is being where the, the trim is actually to be found on the textile, on the, on the textile product, on the clothing. And that part has been erased by the council. Mm. And that was, uh, that was really, uh, uh, that, that makes this article completely nonsense because it is more than an indication of transparency, a warning message, mm. take care. There are non-textile parts of animal origin and it can apply not only to leather, but also to mother pearl, to, I don't know, to, to horn, to other materials that are of animal origin that are not necessarily uh, uh, leather or fur, so it's it's really a very it, it's a very bad legislation. Uh, uh, I agree with you, Gustavo. This should be completed with some precise indication of which part of the article and in which material uh, it is it is uh, it is made. This is I, I completely agree with you. That's and that is why the uh, European standardization has actually produced a standard that allows you to complete this article. There is a standard, an EU standard, a SEN standard, that allows you to complete that with a, with a label because that, that takes over the legislative sentence, but also the indication of the material that is, that if it is leather, and the place where it can be found. So uh, those who want to comply with the European legislation on, for textile clothing and be more specific and more transparent, can use the standard that has been produced in Europe for completing this uh, this rule. I want to I I want to add a comment that and Gustavo, you can help me on dear Maurizia. So question and comment. All these rules are set up by the European Union to defend the hand consumer, correct? And not the industry. The industry is defend in consequences of the end con on consumer, correct? That's correct. That's correct. That's absolutely okay. correct. 
Um, and and what is and what is the impact of uh, your organization within the European Union to produce this kind of legislation? Well, uh, the text, uh, the regulation on textile names and labeling, this one that uh, uh, is actually in uh, and currently on the on the screen, uh, is uh, actually uh, uh, the leather industry is a very marginal stakeholder because it is focused only on textile and textile names and protecting these very, very good terms, how, how the, the textile names should be protected or are protected in, in, on, on the market. However, uh, um, on, on this uh, regulation, we are trying to uh, enlarge the scope. We are, we are talking to our counterparts in the textile industry to see to what extent they agree on enlarging the scope so that we can have also the leather part, the leather industry, and the leather product protected, the leather name, sorry, protected by the same regulation. Yeah. Gustavo, in fact. Can you see the Why Sorry, Maurizio, okay. I, I, I took you. Please go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Okay. So I was just, uh, I was just adding to what you mentioned, the, the, the initiatives that we have uh, in other in other can in the, in the singular countries in Europe, uh, um, in order to 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 protect uh, the the name uh, the name uh, uh, leather, um, we have this important, very important and recent initiative in Italy that has been uh, approved uh, in the last June. It is uh, the new Italian legislative decree number sixty eight of June two thousand twenty that uh, had um, it introduced an important uh, an important renovation of the legislation in italy because it is uh, it substituted an old legislation dating back to the to the 60s and it has introduced this definition that are completely aligned with the the, um, the european legislation that cover just just footwear this is related to the other sectors that are not footwear, and it sets the same, the same, uh, the same definition. So the leather is the hide of an animal with the original structure. Um, the full grain leather is the material that retains the original grain. The coated leather is the uh, is the the material which we mentioned before with the, a coverage that exceeds the 0 0.15 millimeters, but not one third of the total thickness. And then we have the regenerated leather fibers, that is this material composed by uh, at least 50% of uh, leather fibers, uh, which were disintegrated and then um, recomposed with a chemical binder or a glue or, or a polyurethane, as we, we mentioned before, and transform into this, this sheet that cannot be uh, called uh, leather, as we said. And we have, yeah. Yeah, we have a question, Maurizio, yeah. from Francesco La Rocca, where he's saying, "What about how do we classify bicast system?" Bicast, it yeah, is the bicast, the PU, PU split. Yeah, PU split. It's leather. If it, 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 it's, uh, uh, it, it, it is a, a, tip, a typology of article in of the leather industry, and uh, it has to uh, respect this. Uh, um, this uh, requirement so the thickness should not exceed the uh, 0 0.15 uh, uh, 0 0.15 uh, millimeters in order to be named just leather and it could could be named uh, coated leather if it doesn't exceed the one third of the of the thickness it's it's a typology of article alessandra correct me if i'm wrong but this is this is the correct definition of the, of the article yeah. isn't it my cast is a specific type of article that has been produced with a specific technique so uh, splits or even leather receive this finishing film which is made of pu and this finishing film being a finishing film must be lower than 0 0.15 millimeters to call the material leather or uh, can exceed 0 0.15 millimeters and, and must be under one third of the entire thickness, finishing film included, to be called coated leather. Uh, can I answer? I see a question is Newbook full grain leather? It's not. Newbook 
uh, has undergone uh, buffing. So it has been correctly by mechanical means. This mechanical operation is buffing. It's an abrasive action to remove the very surface membrane uh, or superficial membrane of leather so that even the grain layer can show the leather fibers. Yeah, but, but, we can, but Alessandra can follow under the real leather uh, classification. Real leather, but it's not full grain. Yeah. It's not full grain. Full grain is when you don't correct mechanically, um, let's say by buffing uh, the, um, the, the surface. So if you apply buffing, it's not full grain. It's a sort of corrected grain leather. And it's part of the velvety leather category. Because it shows, shows the fibers. That was the article uh, to which I was thinking about while I was, I was saying that uh, the, the, the full grain uh, can, be, uh, can be used, uh, the definition of full grain can be used if uh, any mechanical operation doesn't remove uh, the grain. And this is just what you said, Alessandra, the buffing operation that removes the correct grain for the, for the, the typology of article and, and it transforms to another, into another article. Yes, it's quite tricky because you still see the grain pattern, but it has been corrected because it has got a velvety appearance, but you can still see it. So it's in between. <laughs> it's not a split, but it's not a full grain leather. Cool. I think this is uh, now we are getting into the hot, uh, uh, interesting part of, actually of the topic of today, Maurizio. I mean, you just explained uh, uh, very well uh, what is changing, but mm -hmm. what happened now? What, what is the situation now if I go in the shop and I see a bag and there is written leather? Yeah, right now, uh, this new decree, this new Italian decree, sets that it is forbidden to use the term that I have uh, just described, so leather, but also full grain uh, and, and the other one that, uh, that were described, if they do not respect the definitions that are set by the law. And this is, uh, and this is a, a rule to respect also if you use uh, the word in other languages, than Italian, because we have to, to, to think about this legislation, uh, uh, it is directed to the Italian market. So even if you don't use the Italian term, but you use, for example, the English word, the French word, the German word, because uh, especially for English, these are, or my, uh, these are uh, words that we, uh, we know very well. And even if they are combined into other words with prefixes and suffixes, uh, Let's think about the famous eco leather term. So this is uh, also uh, forbidden as regard uh, as as per this uh, new decree, and also in any means of communication. So it's not only when you go to a shop, when you read a label, but also when you uh, when you look at the newspaper, when you look at the website, and you find an advertisement, an explanation, a promotion of uh, of, um, of a product that uses the word leather in, this, uh, in, in, a, in, the, in the wrong way. So leather should be used just for the uh, genuine, genuine product. So this is uh, just is to say, Maurizio, that at the end, the, the, this law is done uh, to protect the consumer, yes. to avoid that the consumer buy a product thinking that is leather, and at the end is not leather and after a while it, it loses the characteristic of a leather it, it doesn't show the characteristic of a leather so that's very important point that we protect the, the final consumer uh, on awareness and actually want to uh, uh, i want to address now a question to gustavo about this what's happening in europe because if i well understand also france spain and other country are adopting the same uh, or similar legislation is it also happening as soon, hopefully, in, in Europe? Well, um, that's, that's our, our hope, actually. But that's our hope for now, last uh, decade. And uh, actually, th there is a legislation, in, as you said, in France, Spain, Belgium. There are also... Uh, Maurizio is going to, to, to mention the yeah. countries in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a future slide. Uh, here on. you have it. 
<laughs> okay. Here you, you see, have it, the reference. Thank you, thank you, Maritza. I, I hope I don't I don't take away your 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 your. No, no, but, it's okay. <laughs> but it's uh, it's um, it's 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 very. Uh, we, we still we have only a couple of countries in Europe. Uh, the European Union is, is 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 much wider than that, and and therefore it is not a comprehensive protection. So a consumer in Germany or in Austria. Or in, uh, in Austria, you have only labeling for leather clothing. So what about uh, uh, wallets? What about the bag? What about, so it's not a comprehensive legislation. And that's why we are advocating for a leather authenticity regulation or leather authenticity rules within the textile regulation that protects leather, the name leather. Then you can have it in footwear, in bags, in, in furniture, in cars, wherever you want, actually. Leather wraps normally all your most precious goods. So that's you will you will be you will be able to, to have this the protection that what you have bought as leather is actually leather. And that's that's why we, we need to push further the European Union, the European Commission to start its uh, uh, or to use its legislative power for uh, developing a legislation a draft legis legislation which is actually called for by many by many operators by many parts by many stakeholders but it's uh, it's i think it's uh, because we are s such a small sector that we are not really getting the attention that we merit it's not it's not easy gustavo you have all our support because uh, i think it's very challenging uh, as COP to put all together and have all of them agree on these things, but uh, we really believe also that that it, sh it should it should be like this to to also for the especially for the final customer. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah. Well, the the key is protecting the final customers because because uh, only with the correct uh, information for the final customer you can have fair conditions in the market. That's the I think that's. That's a key point of, of all this uh, of all these issues. So, and coming to the protection of the customer, due to the fact uh, that, as Gustavo mentioned, those legislation that you see here in the, in some countries in in the world that are not so uh, you know uniform. Some uh, focus on the terminology, some on the on the labeling, and also we have some countries that just have. Uh, some voluntary standards, um, there are uh, also some rules protecting the consumer. And specifically, there is the directive on unfair commercial practices in, uh, in Europe that defines what is a misleading action and um, it defines such as a commercial practice that is misleading if contains false information. That is why, uh, for example, in the uh, guidelines uh, that were approved in 2016, specifically the terms eco-leather and textile leather were considered deceptive because uh, um, normally they were referred to not an authentic material, but to an imitation, and this is deceptive for the consumer. And a similar, a similar, uh, regulation is also present in the United States with the US letter guides that define in a similar way the deception uh, as to the composition that is unfair if misrepresent the composition of a product and it says that if an article uh, is composed to is composed by different materials and is composed by also imitations of leather this has to be specified for uh, for the consumer in order not to mislead in order to in order not to uh, let them understand that they are buying something else instead of what they want to buy in in, in reality and uh, Alessandra, sorry, I see a question, very interesting question. I actually want to ask to Gustavo uh, about from uh, Leopolda uh, Bellina, and uh, she is asking about: uh, Is this uh, regulation applicable only for the final customer, or only, or, or also for the B two B, for business to business? Well, thank you, thank you for this question. Thank you, Leopolda. That's a very good question. 
Um, there is a, in, in the European Union, there is a, a specific rule, a specific regulation that is applicable to business to business transactions. And that is uh, the, the Directive um, 2006 114 uh, on concerning misleading and comparative advertisement. And that is applicable. That is the, 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 the uh, regulation or the, the rules that are applied to business to business transactions that takes over the UPC, the Unfair Commercial Practices Directive, for precisely uh, the same type of uh, cases, but in a business to business context. So you, it is uh, actually, it is better protected in business to business than in business to consumers because uh, there it is much more uh, easy to apply also commercial law uh, in business to business and therefore you can, you can actually protect much better in business to, to business uh, transaction the term letter than into business to consumers. Thank you very much, Gustavo. This is really an eye opener, I think. And uh, Maurizia, you, you want to go ahead? And yeah, then... yeah. I don't want to take too long with the presentation, so I will conclude very rapidly because I see that we have a lot of questions. And so it's very, I think it's very interesting to, to, to have a debate with the, with the participants. Um, my final message wants to, to, to be this one. So I, I think, we think as a, as a, as a leather industry that um, defining in the correct way an, a material, it should be uh, something related to the transparency. So just uh, uh, to, to, to mention all these alternatives that we are seeing in the market, we have three different, I tried to categorize the different alternatives. We have synthetic fibers, such as, for example, the, the canvas coated with polyurethane uh, that has uh, an origin from, from petroleum. We have plant-based material, these very new, um, new alternatives made by waste or byproducts or from, from agriculture and vegetable fibers, uh, such as the wine, pineapple, cactus, mushroom, apple, and other alternatives that I, I'm sure that every one of us uh, have seen. And we have the uh, bonded leather fibers. So uh, it is very important to be clear in the definition and in the, um, in, in the communication to the consumers because um, protecting the consumers from, uh, from uh, misleading messages is the right way, I think, to, to have a, a, fair, uh, a fair competitiveness, a fair situation in the market. So if the consumers are able to make their choice with the reliable information, uh, I think that this is a benefit for, uh, for every market uh, operator. So this is just uh, the conclusion of, uh, of, uh, of my presentation and then I am, uh, Thank everyone, and I welcome to the questions of the of this very interesting debate that started since the beginning of of this webinar. Okay, guys, there is a beautiful question from Sabrina, from Tony, from ECEC, Quality Certification Institute of, of Leather Sector. So she's an insider, and she has a lot of uh, knowledge about it. She's asking, uh, mentioning uh, the. Uh, various law in leather and standard that there are in leather 11.42.7. She's asking if uh, the self-declaration that are not very verifiable should be dangerous on topic like a greenwashing, uh, greenwashing or other kind of topics. What do you guys think, Gustavo? Sabrina is absolutely right. Um, uh, it's it's dangerous. Uh, greenwashing is, is is something that we should uh, that we should in any case uh, uh, um, eliminate, erase from the market because that's uh, something that is bad for the consumer, is bad for the economy, is bad for the environment, is bad for everybody. So it's uh, it's something that we should be very 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 careful with with, with that. Uh, sometimes it happens without by pure ignorance. Uh, uh, so in, it, it's not really greenwashing, but. Uh, the ignorance of the law does not protect you from from its uh, from its rule. So it's important that the people that are put, placing products on the market know exactly what they say and what they what they what they what they communicate. Um, so uh, it's uh, 
a, a self declaration that is not very verifiable um, is something, particularly on environmental aspects, is something that the European Union is actually going to, to be uh, uh, outruling in, in, during this legislature. Because uh, um, the, the, within the Green Deal, there are a number of initiatives that the Commission is going to be putting in place uh, that uh, are going to be to make sure that uh, um, uh, operators cannot greenwash, uh, cannot go onto the market with with greenwashing. That's uh, a very good question, Sabrina. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. Also, I would like to add, for, as as regards the, the 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 issue of correct terminology, that Sabrina mentioned a very important standard, a very important national standard that sets the minimum requirements in order to define a real eco ladder, which is a genuine ladder, so animal origin ladder, an animal, uh, the authentic material that has been tanned following specific requirements in terms of low environmental impact. So they have as, a, as, a, as an article specific, specific characteristics. And this is why it's so, it's so important to, uh, to have this. To have there, this, there is, this standard. There is another question from Gabriella, where she is asking about faux leather. Can call it is a valid term for leather? Thank you, Gabriella, for this question. Well, uh, it's a excellent question, Gabriella. Uh, yeah. Faux leather is an oxymoron. <laughs> for faux leather is a contradiction in terms. So it is a negation of uh, what the what the noun is actually saying, and that's why it is it it should be. Uh, it is not a correct way to, to, to talk. It is, uh, it is not a legal term. It is not uh, protected by any legal, uh, legal, legal um, um, rules. So it should be avoided by any, by any uh, way. Um, I know that in certain areas, in certain countries, and particularly in, in, in Anglo-Saxon countries, faux fur is actually quite, quite used. But, um, we should be careful with this type of, of expressions because it is, uh, it is confusing. It is really confusing. Um, it is less damaging than others, but it is still confusing because if it is not leather, what is it? So at least the consumer does not know exactly what the material that he, he is buying or she is buying is, uh, is actually, what is the nature of this material? So it is not wrong, it is not wrong, but it is not transparent. And Maurizio made a very good point at the end of her, of her presentation that it's about transparency. If you are open with, what you're, with, with, your nat with the nature of your material, then you are going to be convincing the consumer. If you hide the nature of your material, at the end, you're going to be um, you're, you're going to be displaced from the market. So it's better to start from the beginning with a transparent speech. Thank you, Gustavo. That's uh, really inside on, on, on the full letter that's always been misused. Uh, and uh, um, if I may add something, because I have seen another inter interesting question, another couple of interesting questions uh, in the in the in the Q and A. Um, the first one, how do we deal with the different requirements in different markets? Because uh, the U.S. market is, is required to disclose for pure and the Italian law does not permit it. Well, you have to do it in two different, uh, with two different labels in case. So uh, anyway, the, the, the market operators have to respect the laws of the destination countries, first of all. So if you, uh, my, uh, my answer is if you are producing some, something that is going to the U.S. market, you need to respect the requirements for the U.S. market. Uh, if you are, if you remain in Italy and in Europe, you need to respect the Italian, the Italian regulation, which, for example, and now I, I, I take into consideration another, another question, uh, the, Italian, the Italian requirements for uh, labeling uh, when you use the term leather to describe products uh, uh, makes an exception uh, for the business to business relations, but not uh, in, in the sense that you can use uh, uh, eco leather, faux leather or something like that. Uh, when I was mentioning this exception, I meant that uh, you are not obliged to make a label 
if you are uh, selling goods within the supply chain to make them transformed further uh, uh, before being sold to the consumer. This is this is what uh, this is what what I meant uh, for the exception uh, for business to business operation. Not just that you can uh, you can uh, use uh, the the term with no regulation. You you have to use the correct uh, the correct definition in all the uh, aspects of the of the trade relationship. Also business to business, of course. But uh, you don't need to to make a label just like you you have to do when you when you put your product uh, for uh, for the consumer in the market. And one more, uh, actually, one more team that is very close to us that is uh, sustainability. And also, Susan is asking about sustainability uh, is not directly linked actually with the topic of today, but indirectly it is. So we try to uh, bring. Uh, uh, awareness to the people of uh, what is really sustainable, avoiding the, the greenwash. At this webinar, I think, helps a lot for the uh, terminology of uh, a letter. What we want to ask is like, how can from how can we, from the uh, unit perspective, uh, uh, bring more awareness to have, uh, let's say, uh, more sustainability, more more real sustainability in the in the industry. I can answer if you want. Exactly, yeah, that's sorry yeah. was for you. Training can be one of the answers. What, so Linea Pelle training, what we are doing is to raise awareness about, first of all, about the material. Again, what is leather? What are the different raw materials? What are the different types of processes? What are the different commercial types of finished leather? So what are all the aspects related to the leather industry, sustainability is one of these aspects. So what we are doing is to in, try to increase knowledge about this fascinating material, but very complex material as well, because as we have seen, leather is so different from all the other materials used for the same unit sectors, because it has got a specific properties, uh, it undergoes specific uh, processings. So what we are doing is to increase knowledge, to raise awareness, to talk about uh, the material. We, in, we organize events, courses, workshops, seminars, and these are addressed to uh, designers, buyers, technicians, more generally to all professionals working in the various end use sectors. Not only that, even young designers need to know more about leather. I'm talking about students of fashion schools. And again, uh, students from the primary school, students from the secondary school, they need to get in touch with the material, they need to better understand what it is. Um, they need to get in contact with leather. It's so important to handle the material. It's so important not just to look at it, but to, uh, to handle, to, uh, to, to play perceive all the sensorial properties because we can talk about leather, but at the end, we need to uh, touch, we need to handle, we need to wear leather to, to, understand, to, to really understand the material. This is something we cannot do now. That's why we're organizing online webinars, but we hope we can, uh, we can, uh, we can do it very, very soon. I think, I think based on all the questions that we have in our Q&A section, we about sustainability and leather and what is uh, uh, materials we have to organize and Gustavo can fill us in a little bit, but we have to organize a webinar specific to this because people are very interested. Like for example, uh, you know, say what is more, Mario De Giulio is saying leather is more sustainable than others. Or for example, Anne Sanders say fish and leather like salmon and tilapia are covered. Or Jasmina here, Jasmina say he is asking about life cycle assessment in leather. So Gustavo, what can you tell us about? That? Yes, yes. There is also Susan, Susan Boyd Hendry asked about yes. the sustainability in leather. And so yes. there are a number of questions. Thank you very much for all these questions about sustainability. It's very it's a very hot topic and that uh, and uh, uh, Lina Pelle is organizing specific talks about uh, the, the different aspects of sustainability in, in various uh, webinars. So you, 
you're going to to come back on this uh, quite often but let me let me give just a, a very few uh, indications about this uh, also Julio uh, Choca again is uh, is Choca is, is 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 making this this question EB Stockdale I I see a lot of questions thank you this Nora Nora Orozco also about equal ed well it's it's true um, sustainability is 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 not only a hot topic it is also a priority for the leather industry that's why in Europe of course uh, we have been pushing forward this uh, this item very very strongly but also not only in Europe it's also at the international level the international council of tanners is is acting very importantly on on sustainability and that is why there was this uh, uh, this uh, um, challenge to to hig uh, with regard to this hig index and the the ranking that leather has in the hig index compared to uh, synthetic materials and uh, um, well what we what we achieved with this uh, challenge to to Hig is actually that we are starting to have a dialogue and that is not yet finished so we are in the process of seeing how we can make sure that the metrics that Hig is actually using uh, uh, renders justice to the different materials and not only to those that are of synthetic origin that is uh, so i don't want to preempt any 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 conclusion but i i am i i cross fingers uh, for for that we come to a good end in this in this dialogue and i think that well at least we are on the on the good way uh, that's on on hig but also uh, the in the priority of sustainability and um well, there are questions about uh, whether uh, vegetable leather is, is is more ecological than 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 others. No, no, no. There is a, that that is a, that is a preconception. Uh, that is a, that is something that should be really uh, uh, eliminated, because um, there have been some some studies about the impact of uh, vegetable tanned leather, chrome tanned leather, synthetic tanned leather, and each of the different types of leather has uh, uh, benefits, advantages, and disadvantages with regard to, to, uh, to the environment. And uh, what is really important is that the leather is used for the functional uh, uh, use that it, for, for which it is produced. So that is that you cannot use a vegetable tanned leather for, for a, for instead of a chrome tanned leather. So it's, it's really important that, that you use the leather uh, with the properties and with the functional capacity that you have uh, for which it has been made uh, that's one thing and the second thing and of course that is very important for the sustainability aspect is that the leather that has been produced should have been produced in the best sustain in the most sustainable conditions so in in environmentally sound conditions during the process and also with all uh, taking care of all the residues and all the emissions that are generated during the process only that is is guaranteeing actually the sustainability of leather and that is why in Europe we are we are really putting sustainability as a top priority. Um, oh, this is a huge topic. I know this is a huge. Yeah. I I would suggest participants, if I if I can, to follow the entire path because we have organized seven webinars because sustainability is a very complex uh, topic, uh, and so every each talk will. Um, tackle a specific pillar of sustainability that is the environmental impact, circularity, that is transparency in terminology, that is animal welfare and traceability. So in order to have a general, uh, complete idea of what we mean when we talk about sustainability in the leather industry, please follow the following, uh, following talks that will give you answers um, more deeply on each specific question exactly. very good <laughs> alessandra you anticipated me the next uh, the next webinar will focus on uh, on uh, on circularity and on environmental aspects so if you're interested in this aspect please you are uh, you are invited to follow the next uh, our next webinar yes. circularity Guys, it was amazing to meet you all here. It was amazing to talk to our participants. Thank you a lot. Thank you so much, Gustavo. It was great to have you with us. And uh, see you next week. Ciao, guys. Thank you bye very bye. much, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.